हेलो एवरी वन आई एम किरण जोशी होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड दिस इज द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ क्लास एट हिस्ट्री चैप्टर वीवर्स आयरन आयरन स्मेल्टर्स एंड फैक्ट्री ओनर्स चिल्ड्रन यू हैव लर्न इन द अर्लियर चैप्टर्स दैट द ब्रिटिश ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनीज इंटरेस्ट इन ट्रेड लेड टू द ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ टेरिटरी दैट द कंपनी वॉज बाइंग गुड्स इन इंडिया एंड एक्सपोर्टिंग दैम टू इंग्लैंड and uh, europe for making profit and that with the industrialization british industrialists began to see india as a big market for their industrial products children this affected indian crafts and industries how we will try to understand it through the videos of this chapter the first video of this chapter will explain about the indian textile production Before the British conquered Bengal India was one of the largest producers of cotton textiles in the world Indian textiles were renowned for their fine quality and exquisite uh, craftsmanship and were largely exported to southeast asia west and central asia and with the beginning of trade uh, with europe uh, european trading companies from 16th century the export of indian textile extended to uh, europe also there are many words in english and other languages that are linked with the trade and the craftsmanship of indian weavers let's see what these words tell us as uh, european uh, european traders uh, came to know about the fine indian cotton cloth from arab merchants from mosul which is at present in iraq for the first time so they started referring referring all finely woven textiles as muslin an example of muslin uh, cloth is given here the portuguese came to india for spices and landed in calicut on the kerala coast as shown in the map here along with the spices they also took cotton textiles uh, with them to europe and gave it uh, the name calico derived from calicut which later became common name for all cotton textiles different varieties of indian textiles were very popular in western markets uh, for example printed cotton cloths called chintz kosas and bandana children the english term chintz is derived from the hindi word cheet which is a cloth with small and colorful flowery designs one such example of cheet or chintz is used as the background here these textiles were popular in england and europe mainly because of their uh, special floral designs fine texture and uh, comparative low cost the other word bandana which is used uh, to any brightly colored and printed uh, scarf for the neck or head was derived from the hindi word bandhna means tying used for the brightly colored cloth prepared through tying and dyeing one such example of uh, bandana cloth produced through tying and dyeing is used as the background here these words uh, there were many uh, other types of cloth which became popular with the name of the place of origin in the early uh, 18th century the textile industry had just begun to grow in england and the wool and silk makers in england found themselves unable to uh, compete with the indian textiles they were worried uh, with the popularity of indian textiles and they wanted a secure market within the country and therefore they began protesting against the import of indian cotton textiles the british government in 1720 banned the use of chintz uh, in england by ban uh, by passing an act known as the uh, calico act under the protection of british government the uh, calico printing industry started growing in england it copied or uh, imitated and printed indian designs on white muslin or plain uh, unbleached indian cloth moreover in nine, uh, 1764 john kai invented a machine called spinning jenny by which 
a single worker could operate many spindles to spin thread it increased the productivity of uh, traditional spindles you can see it here in the f uh, in the picture the first picture is given of uh, the sp uh, spinning jenny then with the in, uh, invention of steam engine by richard uh, uh, arkwright in uh, 1786 cotton cloth could be woven in large quantities and in less cost indian textiles dominated the world trade till the end of the 18th century european trading companies uh, the dutch the french and the english trading companies purchased cotton and silk textiles uh, by importing silver but after gaining political power and diwani rights in bengal company did not need uh, to import their silver for trade rather they collected uh, revenue from peasants and zamindars and used this revenue to buy indian textiles now before moving uh, any further in the learning of the story of indian textiles let's learn in short about the indian weavers weavers um, um, means communities uh, specialized in weaving that passed on the their skills Uh, from one generation to the next generation some famous communities of indian weavers are tanti weavers of bengal um, julaha or momin weavers of north india sale uh, kekolar and uh, devangs of south india various stages of uh, cloth production were uh, the first stage was spinning done mostly by women Uh, charkha and uh, takli were the spinning instruments uh, and the spinning uh, the thread was spun on the charkha and rolled on takli second uh, stage was the cloth weaving done mostly by men the other persons engaged in the weaving task were uh, rangrez uh, that is uh, the dyer who used to dye thread for the colored uh, textiles and uh, block printers called chipigars uh, who were needed by weavers for uh, printed cloth this uh, handloom weav uh, weaving was a source of livelihood uh, livelihood for millions of indians but the development of cotton industries in britain adversely affected indian textile uh, producers in many ways first the competition was increased for indian textiles as it had to compete with british textiles in american and european markets where indian textiles were dominating earlier second as british government had imposed very high duty on uh, imported indian textiles uh its export to england became very difficult by the early 19th century english uh, cotton textiles captured african american and european markets uh, which were earlier dominated by indian textiles due to which thousands of uh, uh, textiles english and european uh, companies stopped buying indian textiles due to which thousands of indian weavers became unemployed moreover by 1830s um, indian markets were filled with british cotton cloth not only that but by 1880s uh, out of total use of cotton cloth by indians two third was the british cloth as a result thousands of specialized weavers as well as rural women who used to spin cotton thread were left jobless however sometime some type of cloths could not be produced by machines such as sarees with sophisticated uh, borders or cloths with traditional woven pattern which had a large demand amongst the rich and middle class moreover the poor people in india used very rough uh, cloth that could not be produced in britain therefore therefore uh, handloom weaving was still alive in india in the late 19th century uh, 
शोलापुर इन वेस्टर्न इंडिया एंड मधुरा इन साउथ इंडिया इमर्ज एज इंपॉर्टेंट न्यू सेंटर्स ऑफ वीविंग हैंडलूम वीविंग गॉट अ लॉट ऑफ एनकरेजमेंट ड्यूरिंग नेशनल मूवमेंट ड्यूरिंग दिस मूवमेंट महात्मा गांधी अर्ज पीपल टू यूज हैंड स्पन एंड हैंड वुवन क्लॉथ खादी बिकेम द सिंबल ऑफ नेशनलिज्म एंड चरखा रिप्रेजेंटेड इंडिया इन 1931 व्हेन इंडिया इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस एडॉप्टेड इट्स ट्राई कलर फ्लैग चरखा वॉज पुट एट द सेंटर ऑफ द फ्लैग एज यू कैन सी इट हियर इन द पिक्चर However many weavers uh, and uh, spinners who lost their jobs because uh, became agricultural laborers many went to cities in search of work some migrated to work in plantations in Africa and uh, South America and children some handloom workers got work in the new cotton mills established in Bombay Ahmedabad Sholapur Nagpur and Kanpur In 1854 in Bombay the first cotton mill which was a spinning mill actually was established children bombay was an impo uh, important port uh, from where raw cotton was exported to england and china the vast black soil la uh, land uh, suitable for the growth of cotton was close to bombay therefore it was easy to get raw material for the cotton textile mills that were set up in bombay by the year 1900 there were more than 84 mills in bombay uh, most of which were owned by parsi and gujarati traders who traded with china uh, in other cities like uh, ahmedabad the first uh, mill was started in 1861 and in the next year in kanpur uh, in 1862 uh, these cotton mills uh, provided work to thousands of poor peasants artisans and agricultural laborers initially uh, the indian textile factory industry uh, found it difficult uh, to compete with the impo uh, imported british textiles um, as that was cheaper in price moreover the support and uh, protection which many other countries were getting uh, by their government um, for industrialization uh, with the countries uh, and uh, uh, for which uh, heavy duties were um, imposed on imports to eliminate competition such support was not given to indian industrialists uh, by the colonial government The Indian cotton factory production increased uh, only during the First World War because uh, at that time the lo uh, the textile imports from Britain decreased um, and uh, the supplies for uh, of uh, cloth for military dependent uh, depended on Indian factories only. So this was uh, about the uh, cotton textiles. Uh, that's it. for this video now there are some questions for you to revise the topic first question is what came to be called calico second question who were weavers name some communities famous for weaving third question why did the wool and silk producers in england protest against the import of indian textiles in the early 18th century fourth question what problems did the indian textile factory industry face during the early years of its development children if you found this video helpful and wish to watch more of such content do consider subscribing to the channel and also if you have any queries or any comments please post them in the comment section below thank you